Hi there, my name's Steve Luck, and I'm a professor at the University of California, Davis. I started learning about ERPs when I was a college student back in the 1980s, back when I had a lot more hair. I've been using ERPs ever since to study the mind and brain. Most of my research focuses on attention and working memory, both in typical individuals and in people with schizophrenia. I really like teaching other people about ERPs. For many years, I've run a series of ERP boot camp training workshops with Dr. Emily Kapanman, a professor at San Diego State University. We also have a couple of books about ERPs. One is a general introduction to the ERP technique. The other one covers all the major ERP components. And we've put together several other resources for people who want to learn about the ERP technique. Now, these materials are primarily designed for graduate students and professors, but I also like teaching college students about ERPs. So, I created a series of lecture videos designed for students like you. Your professor wanted to use these videos in the course that you're taking, and I was happy to make the videos available. So, your course will include several of my videos, along with all the other materials that will be taught by your professor. Okay, enough background. It's time to dive in. Let's start with a completely crazy, preposterous idea, namely that it's possible to record meaningful brain activity from electrodes placed on the skin, with the skull separating the electrodes from the brain. A German psychiatrist named Hans Berger first recorded the EEG from the human scalp in the 1920s, but he was a little ahead of his time, and most neuroscientists thought he was crazy and just picking up random junk. After all, how could brain activity produced by tiny little neurons be conducted through the cortex, pass through the meninges, and cross the skull to the scalp? And yet it works. You can put electrodes on the skin overlying the skull and pick up meaningful brain activity. And it works in just about anyone, even an old thick-headed guy like me. Now, when you look at the raw EEG, it's a pretty complicated signal. It's basically the sum of everything the brain is doing. It can indicate if someone is awake or asleep, but in its raw form, the EEG can't reveal the specific neural processes that underlie perception, cognition, and emotion. However, if we apply a simple set of signal processing operations to the raw EEG, we can pull out portions of the neural activity that are related to specific sensory, cognitive, affective, and motor processes. To do this, we record the EEG while the subject performs a task. When a stimulus is presented, a marker called an event code is placed in the EEG data file, indicating what stimulus was presented and when it happened. We also have event codes for behavioral responses. A typical experiment would involve many stimuli and many responses. By using these event codes, we can process the EEG and extract the electrical potentials, the voltages, that are related to the events. That's what an event-related potential is. It's a voltage, an electrical potential, that's related to an event, like a picture on a computer screen, a spoken word, or a button press. So, what can you do with ERPs? Well, you could use them to study the development of face processing in infants and young children. You can use them to track the allocation of attention in complex scenes. You can predict which patients will wake from a coma. And you can see how anxiety and depression change perception, attention, and decision making. You can use ERPs to understand the origins of individual differences in working memory capacity. And you can even use ERPs to decode the contents of working memory and link brain activity to computational models. Although we can do a lot with ERPs, you always need to remember that it's something of a miracle that we can record brain activity from electrodes placed on the skin with big, thick skull bones lying between the brain and the electrodes. So, there are significant limits on the kinds of information that we can extract from EEG signals. For example, we don't usually know which specific areas of the brain are producing the voltages we're recording from our scalp electrodes. But ERPs can still tell us a great deal about the mind and brain that would be difficult to learn from any other technique. I hope you find ERPs as interesting as I did when I was a student.